Hi, I'm Sandra Wheatley. I'm SVP at Fortinet, and today I'm delighted to have uh, my colleague, uh, Tony G. Domenico, who is Director of FortiGuard Response Services. And I'm delighted to have Tony here today to have a conversation about uh, the cybersecurity industry and how many workers are looking to transition and reskill themselves. And we wanted to talk about cybersecurity and the opportunities in the industry. Um, so Tony, let me start with uh, having you talk a little bit about your career path and how you transitioned from the service industry into cybersecurity. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, gosh, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, if I remember, uh, yeah, so I was in the United States you know, Marine Corps and as I transitioned out, I did spend six months you know, living on the beach for a little bit, but after I decided to come back to the real world, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to have folks that were, um, that had kind of left uh, the service before me and they had established a beachhead at a certain organization and there were some openings in a position or in a location where I was at. So I was easily able to transition into that. Now, that was just uh, IT and networking. It wasn't necessarily a cybersecurity role. It wasn't until maybe five years down the road or such, there was a compelling event um, at a you know, trading firm. Uh, I was running uh, the IT and security there, and we were migrating the you know, traders uh, over to a new environment, a new platform. And I, one of those uh, tasks was copying files over, and I remember, I, you know, we finished that. I remember the traders calling me and say, hey, I thought you copied the files. I said, I did. And then lo and behold, I went there and looked and the files weren't there anymore. Well, 36 hours later, um, after we finally figured out there was a virus in the environment, um, it was the I love you virus back then. It was oh, a wow. script, <laughs> right? Somebody ran that thing. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, all of the files were gone. Um, so. Uh, that was kind of exciting for me. That was my first kind of, you know, dip in the water for cybersecurity. The other thing was, you know, leadership goes, uh, well, I need those files back. I said, well, they're deleted. I mean, how, you know, how do we get them back? And then I realized files don't really get deleted on a, you know, disk. They just, uh, they remove the kind of pointer to those files. So that was then again, my first insight into digital disk forensics. So that combination, I said, you know what, that's what I want to get into. And I learned for the next year or so everything I could about cybersecurity. And then I transitioned over to the Hawaiian Islands and I started my own cybersecurity practice. And, uh, you know, here I am today. So I guess that transition was a little tough because you had to go back to the beach for a bit. <laughs> um, but um, it's interesting how you got into cybersecurity because it was something similar that happened to me. I was um, consulting for an organization and um, they uh, had experienced um, a hack into mm. their um, company. And so I was working on that project for several months and I just found it so fascinating that I decided there and then I was going yeah, into yeah cybersecurity nice. and I landed at Fortinet, but what is your advice for individuals who are considering a new career in cyber? You know, first and foremost, I think, I mean, I, there are, you know, when you say the word cybersecurity, I mean, you, you know, and you don't know it well, you know, you hear the news and everything uh, about, you know, the hack that they're hacking here and hacking there, and it gets a little bit overwhelming. It's like, there's no way I can get into cybersecurity. I, my first thing is, it, if you want to get into cybersecurity, cybersecurity reminds me of, you know, Sandra, you remember the, the you know, tip of the iceberg um, kind of picture where you see the, you know, the tip of the iceberg out of the ocean, but then you see how deep it gets under the ocean. That's what I sort of think about with the breadth of opportunity that are available with cybersecurity. There's just so much opportunity there. And, you know, yeah. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not bragging about this, but I never went to college. I was fortunate enough to be able to get to where I am now um, because I think one thing, uh, there was an opportunity there, so I got a little lucky, but I think also there was a lot of information freely available. And I had one thing that the Marine Corps instilled in me 
And that was a work ethic. And I worked my butt off to get to where I am. So I guess, you know, what I'm saying is, is like the opportunity is there. There's a lot of, um, you know, different roles where you don't necessarily have to be, you know, you know, super technical either. Um, you know, look at the, you know, us, uh, you know, with, you know, Fortinet, there's a lot of different roles that it takes to run this business. You got um, the product managers, right, that are trying to actually build the actual, you know, products along with the developers. But then you have folks that are marketing, you have folks in your role that are, you know, communicating, you have, you know, sales folks. So there's a a variety of different routes I think you can go where you don't necessarily need to be a cybersecurity expert. You know, I completely agree with that um, because one of the things that I do is go out and talk to different groups about, you know, the skills gap in cybersecurity and the opportunities there, um, especially for groups that are um, underrepresented, mm -hmm. underrepresented like women and other minorities, mm -hmm. because I know, for example, women make about 20% of the workforce, but yet we have this looming gap. And uh, one, some of the things I've learned are a lot of the misconceptions around this fact that you have to have a technical degree or computer science or something like that. And that's not the case. I mean, you know, less than 50% um, of folks in the industry have a computer science degree. So yeah. lots of misconceptions. I love the fact that you talked about um, not having a degree because I think that's another area that we're seeing, you know, people today have different ways of learning and different ways of pursuing a career. And cybersecurity is one where you can go and you can get the training, something like the guild model or mm -hmm. the apprenticeship model and yep. have a really fruitful career. And I think, you know, one of the things Fortinet has done is with their um, training advancement agenda, they provided the NSC training for free yeah. to the public at large. And it's a great opportunity for people who are interested in transitioning or reskilling or just getting better at their roles to take advantage of that training. Um, any other insights or personal anecdotes that you can share about your journey along the way? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, how do you first, I get this question a lot is, you know, how do you first try, you know, what do you do? I mean, I have these, you know, I'm interested in getting in, but what are the different, uh, you know, roles that are available out there and what have you? I mean, there are a lot of them. Um, I would suggest just kind of go online. I mean, us as vendors, cybersecurity vendors, there's a lot of interesting blogs out there that talk about, you know, different roles. They talk about different sort of threats that they're seeing. Um, you know, one thought is if you really want to start to understand what the threat actors are kind of doing and those types of things, a great example is um, the MITRE ATT&CK framework. You know, we talk a lot about operationalizing MITRE ATT&CK and measuring your security defenses against MITRE ATT&CK and the tactics, techniques and procedures that the adversaries are doing to complete their cyber mission. But that framework is also a great learning tool. I'm seeing more and more um courses kind of crop up that are just using that as a base um you go to that you know website you just uh google um uh you know miter attack and you'll find the actual framework and there's a, a vast amount of information that talks about what they're doing and then they're even developing stuff on how to be able to defend against it so this is just an example of some of the wealth of information that's available out there freely at your fingertips. And I would say the only thing you need to have is the motivation and the passion just to get out there and start learning it. Right. Thanks, Tony. That's really helpful. And I would encourage folks to go to Fortinet's training advancement agenda and the uh, check out our NSC Training Institute. Um, to learn more, we have not only all of our training free, but you'll also find um, information on different career pathways in cybersecurity, really outlining what you need to do and the various steps. So please take that time and, and visit uh, fortinet.com training. Thank you.